Hello everybody and welcome back to How to Draw Comics the Robson Way <clears throat> with your host me, Will Robson. You can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. or you can download all these lessons for free at robsoninc.divianart.com um, So today we're going to talk about shoulders in terms of figure drawing but let's just do a quick uh, recap on what we've learned so far. Okay, so at the beginning I talked about form and again uh, I'm going to bring this up at the beginning of every lesson. This is the most important step uh, in drawing anything. You need to understand that in order to draw anything you need to really see the three-dimensional shapes that make up everything. As in I said here, square, cylinder, circle, spheres, all that, yeah, you got to uh, can make a, a face and also make a whole body and they just make everything. So again, on the side of all your sketches or anything you're drawing, even if you're on the phone or something or you're on the train or whatever, you have a bit of spare free time, just draw these simple shapes in as many positions that you can think of, okay? So moving on from there, we're moving into figure drawing and we talk about the torso, which I've drawn here, which is broken down into a ribcage, abdomen and pelvis, and you combine all of them and you get a nice torso. And remember, what I've drawn here is the torso standing up straight. This will not always be the rhythm that the torso is in. It will bend this way if he's bending down and side and back because the pelvis and the rib cage sort of twist and turn uh, in their own dimensions depending on how the weight is distributed between the arms and the legs. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit confusing but we will get to all that. So in today's lesson uh, we're going to be doing figure drawing again but part two shoulders. I was originally making this lesson arms and shoulders but I decided that the shoulders really need uh, their own attention as long as, and the same with anything goes, I mean every single part of the body is going to need its own step and this is just in terms um, of figure drawing, I will get to later on the actual shape of a, a shoulder and the muscles and how they all work but it's way too complicated to get into right now. I'm trying to break this down as simply as I possibly can first, so later on you can remember the simplicity of this and come back to it and go, oh, that's how shoulders work, and oh, that's how this and that work, okay? So let's begin. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. Uh, I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of that. And Okay, so the placement of the shoulders will determine where the clavicle and scapula bones are positioned. Now, most of you probably never even heard of these two bones, um, but basically, the uh, clavicles are sort of like handlebars that sit just above your pectoral muscles, which are your chest muscles, and right below your traps and your, um, what's it called there, your, your sort of neck muscles. And this is this bone essentially is what uh, moves the shoulder combined with this bone here, which is the scapula. Uh, which is on your back. These two bones sort of come together at a point that sticks out further than the torso uh, where your shoulder connects. Uh, think of it like, I suppose, an action figure that has like little plugs sticking out of it and you sort of plug in all the limbs to it, uh, like Lego men essentially, um, except it's the opposite. Like Lego men have the their arms with the little thing popping out of it, but think of like the torso body having the little things popping out of them, if that makes sense. We've all played with Legos, we know what I'm talking about. So. This is what, something I will definitely cover more in detail later on because these do not always stay in this position. These will move uh, depending on how weight is distributed and where the shoulder is placed. And for instance, uh, I know that with a the scapula, there's an anchor point here. Let me just draw it. Uh, I'm just going to go over this real quick. Uh, this here and this here is the anchor points. So let me make that a bit more clear. Silly tablet's going crazy. Uh, this here and this here and these uh, objects will actually uh, bend like that depending on how the arm is moving and such. So again, I'm going to go over that in more detail much later on. I'm just putting this here um, so you have it in mind. Okay, so let's get back to the lesson. Okay, so the placement of the shoulders will determine where the clavicle and scapular bones are positioned, as I just went over. Arms to stem from the shoulder not the torso and I really want to dig that home because I see so many people drawing um, arms sort of coming out of uh, this little hole here uh, but that's not the way it is because they actually come out from the shoulder um, because the shoulder comes out of the torso and the arms come out of the shoulder that's the rhythm of it and you can easily just look in the mirror and lift up your arms and stuff and see that it's obviously not coming out of your torso it's coming out of the shoulder uh, 
Again, I just want to drive that home because I see that mistake in a lot of people's artwork. Okay, so for our basic figure, the shoulder will be represented as an oval sphere. Okay, uh, obviously uh, the shoulder is a far more complex object than just a sphere, but in terms of figure drawing, a sphere works just fine. What I'm trying to do is break down uh, your drawing into the most simple objects you possibly can first because obviously uh, if you can master the simple shapes everything else is just detail. These are all sort of shorthands on how to essentially draw your figures quickly so you can get to the cool stuff like drawing Batman, you know, his horns and his uh, insignia and stuff like that. This is the most important stuff, the cool stuff comes later. Uh, and with enough practice of the boring stuff the, uh, it becomes the cool stuff because this to me is like the most exciting stuff about drawing. Anyway, so look back at the form lines we placed on the torso. The two angular lines on the upper torso represent the clavicles, which is this here. So if I go down to, uh, well, actually, I'll go back. Oh, I have to do this again. I forgot how to go back. Someone in the comments tell me how what's the, the button to click back easily. So what I've drawn here is all of these lines inside of uh, these shapes. Uh, this here, this line here represents the break of planes. Oh my god, my tablet's going crazy. Uh, so this is a plane here, or this here. And then this is obviously all of a plane here. And then once we add muscles and stuff, they have their own planes. But hang on, before I get ahead of myself, uh, let's just make this red to keep it the same thing. I've drawn lines here. And here, and this is all the same line, obviously. That line is, is just a shorthand for you to remember that that's where the clavicle is, okay? Um, and the clavicles are sort of like handlebars. Uh, they essentially stick out and they bend down and stick out like that. Um, but this is just the shorthand, you don't need to put that in there. And they stick out far enough so that the shoulders can sort of connect into them. And then the scapula uh, will do the same thing, except they're not the shape of handlebars, they're more of shape like this. Uh, my tablet has gone crazy so I apologize. Um, it's obviously messed up right now. Um, so I just wanted to go over that quickly. Let's get back to this lesson. No, don't save. Okay, so. So yeah, again, so the form lines we place on our torso. The two angular lines at the on the upper torso represent the clavicles which I've put here. So clavicles in red, scapula in blue. The scapula should each be placed evenly between the spine and the side plane of the torso. And what I mean by that is if you look here, here's the spine, right here, okay? And then here is the side plane, this, this here. And they sort of placed evenly in between those and point out to connect to the shoulder, okay? Um, <laughs> it, this might get a bit confusing, but this will really be covered later on. Because again, as I said, an arms move, the clavicles will move up here. And then this will move over, like up like this. It gets it gets crazy, but once you understand that, uh, that all those bones move to, and in adjacents, in adjacents, <laughs> um, along with the muscles and everything, uh, moves together. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, so yeah, again, I, before I just put the shoulders on, I just drew uh, a quick thing in there to show you what's going on with. Uh, clavicles and scapula so you can keep them in mind okay so the scapula and clavicles will move depending on where the arm and shoulders move uh, this will be covered later but for now just keep in mind that they're there as I just said uh, I've just put a shorthand in here just so that you're aware that there are bones here and these things uh, are in rhythm together to create this and since I've drawn this torso at a sort of standstill that's why they're in this position and by standstill, I mean that this torso is sort of standing straight. Um, the shoulder sits just outside the upper torso. So even though it is a sphere, you take that sphere and you sort of plop it a bit inside of that shape. And you, you can see that these aren't perfect spheres. I've made them a bit more sort of uh, ovals. Um, and I've put lines here. Usually I don't draw these lines on my final figure, but I've just put them here so you can understand where the planes are um, on this shape. And if you see here, I've got um, the clavicles here, so then they sort of dip to the top of the shoulder, you can see there, and that will be the same when we add the scapula, they sort of go to the same place. Um, so that's how you just place a shoulder on. I really always make my shoulders really simple. Um, 
so note that the shoulder here is in rest, the arms will be placed pointing down. And by that I mean, since I've drawn them like this, it means that the only... I can't have arms like going like... Uh, hang on. I wouldn't have arms going like this, because obviously I haven't drawn uh, them in that way. The arms would have to be going like this, because that's sort of the direction that I've placed uh, my shoulder, okay? And so just a quick um, look into how I'm thinking about that. Let's just go back. I drew this as a quick sketch last night. It is Le Batman. Uh, it's nothing fancy, it's just a little doodle that I did. But just to keep in mind the sort of steps that I'm doing, let me just bring this up. Because uh, this is what I want to dive home later on. So I started with this, and this is what we're, we're studying right now, which is figure drawing. Uh, and you'll notice that here, see, I've just made my shoulder. Hang on, I'll make a new layer. Uh, you notice here, I've just made my shoulder a circle. Um, but obviously later on, when we add the inks, it becomes a bit more um, than just a circle because it has the different muscles on it. And even those muscles I drew there aren't really that correct. Um, so let's just get rid of him again. So stepwise, what will be happening is you start with this. This is so important. I mean, you can pretty much see that everything's in place there. Since everything's in place here, uh, I know where to put everything. And then... I went to pencils, and again, even my pencils are super rough. It's, again, this is more me placing in the anatomy, and even all the leg stuff's wrong. I'll have to f fix that. This was just a quick, like, 20-minute doodle. Um, and then, obviously, inks come later on, and that's when you add all the fancy schmancy stuff. So I, I'm only telling you that this now is that uh, I wouldn't have been able to get to that picture without thinking about all of these steps that I'll be covering in this lesson. Okay, folks? So that's it for this week's lesson. Uh, so that was figure drawing, uh, lesson two, part two, shoulders. Um, and then next week, I think we'll be going into arms. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Again, you can check out my work at facebook.com forward slash Robson Inc. Uh, let me know what you think about this series in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.